Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Dana Lyons, and I am happy to be here singing a concert on Facebook Live and YouTube and what other, other places it's going out to for Orca Month. And Orca Month, we're here in the Salish Sea bioregion. Uh, my friend, you can see my friend uh, Rain Adam in there. He'll be, I'll be introducing Rain in a few seconds. But uh, we're here during Orca Month. June, the whole month of June is Orca Month in Washington, British Columbia. I believe also Oregon. Rain will uh, correct me if I'm wrong on that in a couple seconds. But we're trying to raise awareness about protecting the endangered orcas here. Uh, now I want to introduce my friend uh, Rain Adaman. We've been on many rafting trips and worked on many environmental issues for many years. And really happy to be here with you, with you, Rain. Uh, tell us about Orca Month and what's going on. <clears throat> well, thank you so much, Dana, for uh, making this happen. Uh, it's individuals like yourself that really put your uh, life and heart into uh, causes and efforts and. Uh, month of June is pretty um, <clears throat> special for us here in the Northwest. Uh, we are celebrating Orca Month. Um, it's an opportunity for uh, the public to learn about the plight of our magnificent creature here in the Salish Sea. It's endangered with only 72 individuals left in this unique population and learn about what um, makes them endangered and what makes them beautiful and unique. Um, here in the Salish Sea, they depend on salmon, which is also very threatened, though their prey source is uh, not very abundant. So that's why they're suffering along with some other causes. But uh, the idea here for the month of June is connect you to the southern resident orca population and uh, inspire you to engage and take action. And today uh, we're going to enjoy music from Dana. Uh, and learn more about what you can do and learn more about work. Thank, thank you, Rain. And we are, we're broadcasting today on five Facebook channels. And I'm kind of curious to see where people are watching. It's on, uh, we're broadcasting on the Orca Month Facebook page, the Orca Network, the Orca Salmon Alliance, People for Puget Sound, uh, on my uh, music page, Facebook slash Dana Lines, and I've ever forgotten one, Rain. I, I think three, cover, I got all five. Covered all five of them. All yes. five. And then, <clears throat> Rain, I don't know if you want to share the uh, statement uh, from uh, about Black Lives oh. Matter with the, with the, that's the Washington Environmental Council. But, uh, you know, as uh, <clears throat> people all over the world are aware, we've been, uh, you know, struggling here in the United States and and in many countries around the world frankly about systemic racism and we wanted to just say a few words about that uh, before we begin right yes uh, we're in a uh, momentous uh time here in the last couple of weeks really earth shattering and uh earth moving and we acknowledge what is happening and um washington environmental council along with our uh partners at the orca salmon alliance um, which is the kind of alliance of 14 organizations that are uh, putting Orca Month together, um, really um, acknowledge and reflect, or reflecting deeply upon the sy systemic racism and police brutality against Black people in our country at this moment. And uh, these injustices are a result of the same social and political inequalities that unfairly place Black, Hispanic, Indigenous, Asian, and Pacific Islanders and other communities of color in the front lines of toxic pollution, environmental burdens all across the United States. And uh, these burdens do not exist in isolation as a quality of life for the people of color living in environmental justice communities continues to be threatened. The health of the Pacific Northwest most iconic species are Chinook salmon and Southern residents also at risk. So we stand in solidarity with the black communities and continue, uh, work to um, include uh, racial equity and justice into our work. Uh, as we move forward. Thank you, Rain. That was uh, beautifully put. And just something I think a lot about, you know, for the, for those of us who are working to protect the environment, uh, it's when you really think about it, we we can't create the sustainable culture we want in order to 
we can't do that without addressing social justice issues. Um, for, for us to have a healthy and sustainable environment, we have to take care of people in every way. And conversely, for us to have social justice for people, we have to have a healthy and vibrant environment. <clears throat> and sometimes some of us in the different groups, whether you're working on social justice or environment, uh, forget that. So I try to remind that of people all the time. We have to have both to accomplish both. And, uh, and it's an exciting time of change uh, now being led by the Black Lives Matter movement. Thank you. Yeah, and, and also, um, Dana, we know that it is so important for us to be accountable. For, uh, being accountable calls for transparency. And such, we recognize that many uh, or environmental organizations in the region, like ourselves, Washington Environmental Council, are historically white-led organizations. And the collective whiteness of our respective organizations and as a coalition is a constant reminder that we need to uh, do more to be allies in the fight against system, system, systemic racism <laughs> that's out there. Uh, so it's really um, needed in this uh, time. Right on. Thank you. <clears throat> well, would you yeah. like to say... A little bit about Orca Month, or should I sing a song? We'll come back. And... Let's, we've been. Let's let's start with some music. We start with some music. Spoken. Right on. We've spoken already, so. Okay. All right, Rain. Thank you for that chat. And okay, I'm going to bring myself up on the screen. We will bring Rain back soon. <clears throat> and uh, for the Orca Month show, I thought I would start out with my song, "The Great Salish Sea." which I wrote for the Orcas. And I want to thank uh, my friend Stephanie Buffum, who is the executive director of Friends of the San Juan Islands. And Stephanie suggested the topic of this song. And uh, we were hanging out once and she said, hey, could you write a song from the perspective of Granny? And Granny was the matriarch of the Southern resident Orcas. And when I say Southern resident Orcas, that's the name for the local Orcas in the Salish Sea area. And when I say Salish Sea, because I know we have people watching from around the country and around the world, in addition to here at home in the Salish Sea, the Salish Sea is a relatively new name. Uh, the Puget Sound and the Strait of Juan de Fuca uh, and the <clears throat> was renamed in around 2011 to be called the Salish Sea. And the Southern resident orcas mostly, most of the year live here in the Salish Sea and they go down to the Columbia River in Oregon. But Granny passed away a few years ago. She was around 104 years old. And Stephanie said, why don't you write a song from the perspective of Granny? Because imagine what she has witnessed over the last 100 years. I mean, 100 years ago, I think there was still some wailing going on here. She saw some of that slaughter. and But then, of course, it was with the great sailing ships. And 100 years ago... There was a lot of, of the giant dugout cedar canoes with the Native Americans going all over the place here. And you know, there's a lot now, especially in the summer, but back then that was largely what was happening, boat-wise. And then the change of the sound of the boats and then the small motor boats and the giant motor boats and then the effect of the sound on the orcas. And I, uh, my friend Val Veers, who is an orca scientist from Orcas Island, uh, he might, be, he might be San Juan Island. But Val pointed out at a talk at a show I did that when the waters are quiet, when there's no big ships in the Salish Sea, orcas can speak to each other through their song and hear each other at least seven or eight kilometers away. And when there's a big ship, even if it's miles away, they're so loud, instead of seven or eight kilometers to hear what they're saying, they can maybe hear... 100 meters. So that's a huge difference. And um, so you know, imagine the, uh, the health effects of this noise. Imagine the communication effects and uh, the conversations that can't be had. <clears throat> and there, there's a movement to create quiet times and places for the orcas because the, the noise is 24 hours a day currently. And someday, hopefully, we will achieve that. But here's the Great Salish Sea. <clears throat> We will 
will swim a thousand miles to reach the shores of emerald isles with salmon spawning by the million herring spawning by the billion gather with our pods again the summer food the summer friends to raise our babies safe and free we gather in the salish sea oh hush hear the swish of the boats on the water the hollowed out cedars the sons and the daughters the rhythm of paddles caressing the water the rhythm of paddles to come greet the orca remember the legend the myth then the story a long time ago when we witnessed the glory with thousands and thousands the whales swimming free the orcas come home to the great sailor sea I hear your song for many miles, your distant thoughts, your distant smiles. Today we fish in different bays, tonight we meet again to play. Oh, hush! Hear the swish of the boats on the water, the great sailing ships with the sons and the daughters, the wind and the wood as it cuts through the water, the wind and the wood sailing out to the orca. Remember the legend, the myth than the story a long time ago when we witnessed the glory with thousands and thousands of whales swimming free the orcas come home to the great sailor sea One hundred times around the sun I saw the slaughter, smelled the blood The water turning blue to brown The metal ships, the screaming sound I cannot hear your song today the salmon gone, the herring late And more and more the ships do come Will anybody hear my song? Oh, hush, hear the scream of the ships on the water The great super tankers, the coal ports, the freighters The deafening noise overtaking the water the deafening noise overcoming the orca Remember the legend, the myth and the story A long time ago when we witnessed the glory With thousands and thousands of whales swimming free The orcas come home to the great Salish Sea Oh hush! Hear the voice from both sides of the border The rallies, the blockades, the brave sons and daughters The people speak out for protecting the water The people are rising to come save the orca oh, oh, oh. Thank you. <laughs> I can hear 
when you're performing alone in your room, you have to imagine throngs cheering. <sighs> Thank you. It's one of the trippy things. We'll bring, bring rain back in here. And uh, I can see. Uh, yes, rain. That was stupendous. That was beautiful. And Thank you. Uh, what a great tribute to Stephanie Buffum, who spent a lot of years at uh, Friends of the San Juans and just earlier this year retired. Um, did she retire? Yeah, she's no longer executive director. I did not know that. I did not know yeah. that. Right. got to her. Yes. <laughs> That's, uh, that is Lummy for uh, thank you. <clears throat> and I see we got some comments here on the screen. We got people watching from many places. Oh, yeah. Thanks to Beth. Uh, another uh, one of our lo great local activists, uh, Beth Brownfield. The song also, also gives me goosebumps. Oh, I yeah. see and feel Granny's spirit. For folks uh, watching from other parts of the world, uh, it's really fascinating. Our region, I mean, everyone in our region loves the orcas. Uh, the orcas are the, I love this term, the charismatic megafauna of our region. They are the, the symbol of our region and many, many people, thousands of people know the orcas by names. It's funny, I have a Save the Orca t-shirt with some fins of real orcas from our resident orcas and people will walk up and look at the shirt and go, oh, that's so-and-so and that's so-and-so. I don't know all the name, but many people do. And so people really re relate to Granny. Uh, Jennifer saying hi from Uncle Tia. We have people from around, let's see. Granny, rest in peace. See, Granny is, Granny's, uh, she's the most famous leader in our region. Uh, it's the she truth. Is. <laughs> more, more people know the matriarch, the name of the matriarch of the orcas than know the name of our governor. <clears throat> and, we, and we have a great governor, so, <laughs> but it's, it's funny. Oh, there's w Wendy from the Orca Network. Thank you, Wendy, and thank you for uh, your leadership with Orca Network. Uh, Orca Network, remarkable uh, team of people who they call in and say where they're seeing the orcas in real time so it's, it's fascinating if you want to know where the orcas are you got to be on the orca nut network uh, team yeah there's pat from kitsap county from the forbidden peninsula <laughs> that's right you mainlanders stay home <laughs> looking through ontario we've got someone calling from ontario that's michael from ontario and uh California. All right. Thank you, Harold. All right. Well, let's hear some more music. All right. Um, and I think there's people, I can't tell where people are. Oh, actually, you can tell. Oh, there's Orca Network. All right, great. All right. Let me know if you have any uh, requests. Are you requests? taking a request, Dana? Uh, sure. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. Put, put, out the, put out the request. Hello, Warren. Up there working to fight uh, to protect uh, Tofino and the Clyde with sound. Okay, we got, we got a lot of orca protectors on here. Now we got folks from Michigan, Whidbey Island. Okay, so this tune, <clears throat> this is a, normally I was supposed to get back yesterday from a tour in Australia, which was uh, canceled because of the uh, coronavirus pandemic. And I often tour this time of year. And when I get back from being gone in May and June, my lawn is four feet high. But this year, since I am uh, here at home, I've been cutting my lawn. So this, this song has special meaning for me. Since this is the first season of my adult, li adult life, my first spring where I've been here to cut the lawn the whole time. I'm not coming back for a four foot lawn. <clears throat> this is Ride, Ride the Lawn. I'm going to dedicate this to my father who inspired this song. And there's a sing-along in this. And we, of course, cannot hear each other when we're singing along. And I, of course, cannot hear when you're singing along, but you, we can imagine each other in our various rooms. <laughs> I know everyone got dressed up for the show, and I appreciate that, but I'll tell you when you get the sing-along part. Well, that's right after free. I promised a free reign from the... <laughs> so he doesn't have to stand there and look fascinated the whole song. Here we go. <laughs> I'm 
My grandpa was a cowboy and his pa before him. They rode the range, killed the buffalo, and fought the Indian. But the great herd's on the prairie, and the wild frontier is gone. So to carry on my heritage, I go out and ride the lawn. Ride the lawn, ride the lawn. Here on my quarter acre lot, I sing my freedom song. Ride the lawn, ride the lawn. Oh, oh. We'll hunt the dandelion down and whack him till he's gone. Now you can sing along on any part of this, but uh, at the end of the chorus, the gals go, Ooh, and the guys go, ride the lawn. Then we all go, let's practice that once. Ooh, ride the lawn. That was outstanding, thank you. My neighbor is a slacker, and he rarely rides the lawn. He says that he likes wildflowers with dew on them at dawn. But the enemy travels quickly when the winds are strong. Next week while he's on vacation, his dandies will be gone. Ride the lawn, ride the lawn. Here on my quarter acre lot I sing my freedom song. Ride the lawn. Ride the lawn, oh, oh, we'll hunt the dandelion down and whack him till he's gone. Ooh, ride the lawn, Ooh, ride the lawn. The problem with suburbia is you cannot shoot your gun. So how does one kill herds of moles who eat grass just for fun? Well, I've loaded up my arsenal with shells and ammo cans. And under cover of the fireworks, July 4th, I'll make my stand. Ride the lawn, ride the lawn. Here on my quarter acre lot, I sing my freedom song, ride the lawn. Ride the long, oh, oh, we'll hunt the dandelion down and whack him till he's gone. Here we go. One more time. Oh, that was beautiful. My son came home from college and he criticized my lawn. He said fertilizers, herbicides, and pesticides are wrong. Well, I'll listen to your politics and your weirdo leftist songs. But when you're under my roof, don't you dare speak ill of lawns. Ride the lawn, ride the lawn. Here on my quarter acre lot, I sing my freedom song. Ride the lawn. Ride the lawn, oh, woo! We'll hunt the dandelion down and whack him till he's gone. Ooh, ride the lawn. Ooh, ride the lawn. Thank you. Thank you. That is a, that is a true story about my father and I. And my father used to come over here and cut my lawn when I was on tour. And uh, my yard looked so nice, people would ask if I had sold my place. <laughs> but uh, anyway, <laughs> yeah, I came home from college and I told my, told my father everything I had learned about lawns and he was he was not amused, and well, this song came out of it, and, uh, and he likes the song, and, and now I, I cut the lawn, but he, he does the weed whacking. <laughs> Thank you, Dad. 
Okay. Looking up. Oh, oh lots of lots of comments. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> oh, applause. Oh, a lot of applause. <sighs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we are here uh, celebrating Orca Month. Uh, it won't let me on reading these things. Generous. <laughs> We are here uh, celebrating Orca Month. June is Orca Month here in Washington, British Columbia, and Oregon. And those are officially uh, named holiday um, because our bioregion, the great Salish Sea watershed, we love the orcas. And what can we do? And for those of us who live here, we can do things uh, to save the orcas. And though for those of you who live far away, who want to see the orcas when you come here, you can do some things two, excuse me. Uh, first of all, one of the, the way the orcas are being, I'm going to bring Rain on here in a second, and he can clarify some of the things I'm saying and maybe add to this. But uh, <clears throat> one of the challenges the orcas are facing, there are 72 uh, resident orcas left right now in our area. That's not a lot. And they're having trouble. And one thing is they are short on food. Some of them look like they're starving, and that's because their main food source, food source, the king salmon, are in short supply. And uh, one thing that's fascinating about our southern residents is that their main food source is king salmon and other salmon. They don't eat seals. It's fascinating. Other orcas eat seals and eat whatever they want. And I'm, I've always been curious. I've never been able to have this discussion with an orca, but maybe... Someday someone will figure out how to speak orca, and we can ask them, I wonder, is it, uh, is it a physical thing? Is it a dietary thing? Is it a spiritual thing? Is, it a, is, it that, is that like the vegetarian version of orca? But they only eat salmon. And so we've done a huge amount of damage to our uh, salmon habitats, and so a lot of people are working to rebuild salmon habitat, to fix up streams and replant native plants, which is wonderful. There is a movement to remove the Snake River dams, uh, that alone would be the largest thing we could do to help the king salmon come back because that would open up the river, the Snake River, all the way up into Idaho where lots of king salmon could live and all of a sudden there would be more king salmon and more food for the orca. So those are, those are two things. Uh, we're working to reduce noise from boats, especially large ships. And I'm curious with our economic slowdown with the... Uh, with the pandemic, I wonder, I don't know the statistics on that, maybe Rain does, or maybe some other orca experts who are uh, watching do. I wonder if that has reduced the noise for the orcas right now. I wonder if they're getting a little reprieve from the, uh, from the noise. I'll, I'll bring in Rain and see if he's here and see if he has any other things, what we can do, what we can, how we can help, uh, help the orcas. Rain. Well, I, I don't have a simple answer for that, Dana, because <laughs> um, literally um, a couple of years ago, the governor of our state, Governor Inslee, put together an orca recovery task force, and they came up with 49 recommendations for actions to address a whole litany of threats that, pertaining to prey availability, uh, to increase the abundance of those Chinook salmon. They re decrease the toxics and pollution that is in our waters and in the salmon and in their food chain. Three, to decrease the vessel noise and disturbance out on the water because we are, we have a very noisy Salish Sea and we need to quiet the waters for them so they can find their, um, use ecolocation to find their food, which is limited. So you can't find your food and it's all, very little out there to begin with and it's even more trouble. When you can't eat food, the toxins in your body become um, uh, released from your fat into your bloodstream. And so baby orcas who depend on their mothers for milk, uh, not very good when you're eating toxic milk. Uh, so those are some of the uh, big threats and there's no one silver bullet. It's gonna take a lot of those actions working in sync, some in the near term, some take longer like getting toxics out of our um, system, uh, our system and the <laughs> Sailor Sea system. But um, yeah, uh, one of you, my favorite songs, Dana, that you play is uh, Taking Down the Dam, The Crack in the Dam. What's it called? The Drop of Water. Drop of Water. Drop of Water. I'm requesting Drop of Water. 
Or, um, or... Because here in the Salish Sea, the uh, Elwha River system, uh, after 20 years of attempting to get funding and traction, a uh, big restoration effort took place and removal of several dams. And the ecosystem is coming back to life as it was hundreds of years ago. Um, so, uh, it, and for individual, well, let's talk about individual actions that people can take at, uh, later on in the show. Um, Great. So, but all yours, Dana. All right, thanks, Rain. I'll be happy to play. That's a great choice. I'll bring. Uh, Rain requested my song, "Drop of Water," and I had the honor of singing this at the the dam removal ceremony on the Elwha River in the Olympic National Park on the Olympic Peninsula, and the there were two dams there on the Elwha that were built a hundred years ago. And the native peoples of that area were against the dams from the beginning. And then about 50 years ago, other people from the area started joining them. And then there was a movement to remove these dams <clears throat> to help the salmon, to help the bear, to help the forest, to help the orca, to help the native Americans who lived there. And then they actually passed the law to remove the dams, and then it took another number of years to get the money to remove the dams, and then they finally had it. And it's, it's an amazing example of our democracy, of people power working. It's easy to be disillusioned about our democracy. There's a lot of problems with it. But our democracy, when enough of us get behind something, sometimes it works, and that's what happened with those dams. And there was a big enough movement. And when there's enough people behind it, the elected officials kind of look over their shoulder and go, oh, wow, I better get behind that if they're not already. And they did, and they got the money, and we did it. We did it. And I, and, and I was so honored to be able to be there at the ceremony. And uh, there were about 450 of us right next to the dam site. There would have been tens of thousands, but it was a very small area. And it was invite only, sadly, the, the public would have been there by the tens of thousands because it's one of the one of the most amazing moments in our recent history. Uh, about half the folks were from the Elwha and the Jamestown Clallam uh, nations, Indian nations, and elders spoke, leaders spoke. Uh, our elected officials were up on the stage. The Secretary of Interior, both our U.S. senators, our governor, the uh, tribal chair of the Jamestown Clallam, and on and on and on, and. People spoke and I got to sing this song. I was the last on the bill and I was backed up by the Port Angeles High School Choir. And it was just, it was so moving to me to have these young people, uh, some of whom no doubt were the grandchildren of the loggers of the old growth trees, um, uh, where we were working, you know, years ago. And it, it was just the coming together of these communities and it was it was just spectacular and to get to the site all of us had to cross the dam and it's about a hundred foot down to the water and it was about the size of a two-lane highway on top and it was had beautiful arches and it was decorated with artwork created by the elementary school students of Port Angeles and as you walked across if you looked down on the dry side of the dam the lake was still there of course um, you could see these pools of water at the bottom of the dam. And there were about 60 king salmon swimming in these pools. And every once in a while, one of them would bump its nose against the dam. Those salmon had been bumping their nose against that dam for the last 100 years. Not, not the same salmon, but their relatives. Because salmon go back to where they were born. And it was really powerful and really moving. And uh, with all the different elders and leaders speaking, there was, there was a lot of crying. It was, it was, a, it was a big day. And, uh, and it was an amazing moment <laughs> when the Secretary of Interior <laughs> gave the order to begin the demolition of the dam. And this huge excavator is smashing into the dam. And there's shards of cement going flying all over the place. And our senators and governor and everyone are applauding uh, politely and... 
<laughs> I had to pinch myself. I like, is this real? Is this real? Am I dreaming this? Is this a fantasy? <laughs> and this uh, this elder came up to me and he looks at me. He goes, "Can you believe this?" <laughs> It was a great day, but I tell that story because it's an example of many years of hard work and the people standing up and speaking out and succeeding in making a change in our society. And I believe that the Pacific Northwest, we were successful in removing those dams. We were successful in stopping six coal ports in Washington and in Oregon. And I believe we can be successful in removing the dams from the Snake River uh, to, to free, to, to allow those salmon to, 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 to go free, to spawn, and to help the orca. I believe we can, I believe we have the strength, both as a region and with support from people from our country and all over the world, to protect the orcas. So we have a lot of work, um, but, but we, we can do it. There's a drop of water on the wall And the drop's about to fall And it falls into a trickle And the trickle's flowing down Down, down to the ground And the moss begins to grow Watch, 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 watch the water flow And watch the current become a stream a bustin' through the seams, crackin' through the concrete, a bendin' down the steel, in a raging that is real, a tearing torrent you can feel, feel the thunder growin', thunder underground, and in my heart, the chains fallin' apart, the wildness in our soul, and for once in life, for once in life, I know I am not alone, for the mountains make our bones, with the oceans in our blood, our feet planted, planted firmly in the mud, we are alive, the burning embers in our eyes, the tingling touch upon our skin, and in the heat of passion we begin to understand, that we are of this land. That we are part of earth And when she's threatened We will fight for all we're worth We watch the dam The dam come crashing down Water rushing to the sea And now the river Now the river Now the river Now is free drops about to fall and it falls into a trickle and the trickles flowing down 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 to the ground and the moss begins to grow watch 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 the water flow and watch the current I become a stream a busting through the seams a cracking through the concrete a bending down the steel in a raging that is real a tearing a torrent you can feel feel the thunder growing thunder underground and in my heart the chains falling apart water rushing to the sea now the river now the river now the river now is free
Wow. That's the first time I've sung that, performed that sitting down in a long time. Where is going to break my chair? <clears throat> huh, that feels good. <clears throat> Thank you for requesting that rain. It kind of took me to another space. Ah. Got uh, Dan, my friend, uh, old friend Dan. I, I don't know if you're still in upstate New York. Dan is requesting my country. I would love to sing that. I'll put that up there. My old friend Dan Ardia, who's a, uh, I'm bringing you on there. I see that there, I can see a rain there. I'll bring you on here in a second then. Requesting my country. I'm going to sing that at some point here for you, but I want to bring in rain and see what he has to say. Here comes rain. Thank you, Kathy Johnson. Hey, rain. Hey, hey. fantastic. <laughs> that was lovely. Thank you rain. so much. Thank rain. When you're listening, like I'm learning how to do this, uh, online stuff and I've got my little thing here that when it turns red that means i'm clipping a little bit does it ever does, is it ever sounding distorted to you or is it sounding pretty even Ooh. beautiful it's really smooth cool. Cool. very cool. good acoustics excellent excellent so um dana you got a bunch of uh, requests here how are you going to handle all this we're going to play all night now can you see the requests on your screen can you see yeah i'm looking at the live comments oh excellent excellent yeah so um well yeah we yeah, I guess uh, we're, we're, we're <laughs> the uh, official part of the show is supposed to end in a couple of minutes, but you know, we have about six hours of requests. We might just keep going, you know, so <laughs> make it a great, grateful dead kind of show. Nobody's going to kick you out of, or off the stage there, Dana. <laughs> for, for, for... I just appreciate how security is just really protecting me here. And thank you. Yep. <laughs> Hold, hey, please, please. Hey, you want to? Thank you up in the cheap seats. Right on. Thank you, everybody. All right. Yeah, this is <laughs> yeah, the... <laughs> performing in the pandemic. Got to have an active imagination, an active imagination. Uh... Let's see. Uh, do you see cane toad mustard? Oh, wow. You're asking me for hard ones now. I w... <laughs> that is a long involved song. <laughs> um, let's see. What else have you seen requested? I'm looking down. Oh, wow. See the dams come down. The orcas have food again. Tree, All right. the tree, the river, the tree. Great. Oh, Deborah Ellers. Deborah is one of the leaders of the uh, the orca. I'm forgetting the name of your group. They, they disco. They. I've actually performed a Bee Gees song, "Staying Alive," to twelve orcas, people in orcas from, mostly from Port Townsend area, discoing. It is something to behold. I. Rain, I have a very interesting job, but I never imagined I would be singing a Bee Gees cover backing up 12 discoing orcas. Now that... Now, I can now, see that happening. You, I, <laughs> I know you can see that happening because you have an orca costume. And, and by the way, on Fridays, we're doing uh, Friday mornings, Rain and other members of our Orca Month team are reading uh, children's stories Friday 11 a.m. Seattle time, yep. so you can, and there's, it's a Zoom event, it's on the Orca Month page, but they're beautiful little illustrated children's books, and I sing a couple songs at the end, but Rain wore his Orca costume, and I've been, see, Rain gets a few minutes every time I play a song, I think Rain should be changing costumes every song, so, but. <laughs> well, well, maybe. Is that your request for me? The orca, the orca costume would be fun, but you look pretty comfortable. I'm not gonna. It, it's your, it's Sunday. It's Sunday. You, it's you can fun. do whatever you want. Rain, don't listen to me. Don't listen. To me. Well, <laughs> for folks listening out there, please go to Orca Month website, orcamonth.wordpress.com. There's a long list of events happening, mostly all virtual, um, due to COVID-19. Um, so check it out. Participate. Learn more. Um, and there's a bunch of webinars, a bunch of arts activities, uh, storytelling, pub quizzes. Actually, there's, yeah, there's one coming up next week where we can drink beer virtually and learn about orcas. <laughs> and if you search Orca Month on uh, Google, you find their page. All the information is there. Also want to, again, say hello to, we're broadcasting to five Facebook pages. We're broadcasting my music page, Facebook slash Dana Lyons to Orca Month, Orca Network, 
Orca Salmon Alliance and People for Puget Sound. That's as many as we could get on the bill with StreamYard. And we're so happy you're all here. <clears throat> and let's do some requests. Let's see. Oh, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play that song eventually for Dan. Uh, my country is in a high register, so I got to kind of work up to that. Um, my friend uh, Robert, uh, we lived on the same hall in college, is uh, asking for uh, the song about the salmon from the perspective of the indigenous community. That's uh, Salmon Come Home, and I would love to sing that song. And a matter of fact, why don't I do that one right now? And then we'll take it from there, work up to uh, my country. Oh, this is, it's, it's so much fun to see friends. Uh, what? Oh, wait. Oh, we have, we have uh, <clears throat> a report of the orca sightings. The orcas have been sighted. Uh, Biggs orcas at Dana Passage. Is that real? Is that real, Wendy? <laughs> During my show. How about that? See? The orcas are clearly <clears throat> a higher species. They, they're, they're telepathically watching the show and like, hey, man, Lions is uh, doing a show for us. Let's just all go to Dana Passage for the show. That's, that's very cool. Orca Network, if you want to know where the orcas are at. And all right, we'll just leave that up there in case any of you are near Dana Passage. <clears throat> uh, this song that Robert... Uh, requested it's called salmon come home uh i love singing this song in our region it's really it really holds true in anywhere in salmon country and salmon country ex in here in north america at least extends all the way up from uh, santa cruz all the way up to the yukon river in alaska <clears throat> and this uh, song was written uh in a tiny athabascan village in, in Alaska, uh, on the Cook Inlet, Tyonic. And my buddy, uh, uh, Rob Rosenfeld, and, and my friends from the Cook Inlet Keeper were saying, hey man, you gotta write a song about uh, stopping the coal mine there. And I said, can you get me up there? You know, I, I like to research and learn. You know, of course, a trip to Alaska would be nice. But Rob said, hey, I'll hire you as a camp counselor. We're going to do a summer camp for the children of the community at Tyonic. And it was fascinating. And when I got there, I was jet lagged coming up from Bellingham and exhausted. And I really, I just wanted to take a, a nap. And the second we got there, Rob said, okay, we're going fishing. And we went out to uh, watch the local folks put out the salmon nets. And Rob stuffed some map in my hand. He goes, this is this is where the coal mine is, blah, blah, blah. I got to go help the kids. And I'm sitting there falling, trying not to try and stay awake. And then this uh, elder, Chad, sits down with me. He sees me with a map and he starts downloading their history to me. He's just explaining this happened and this happened and this happened. And this is where the, the, they want to put the mine. It's going to cause this. And I, <clears throat> fortunately, even though I was jet lagged, I had the wherewithal to realize, oh, my God, he, Chad, is giving me the entire song right now. And in this jet lag state, I have to memorize everything he's saying. And then I need to go write it down. And he talked to me for two hours. And this song is based on what he told me. And <clears throat> I wrote it, I don't know if it was the next day or the day after, um, early in the morning. And the first time I sang this song was, it was, it, it was one of the more challenging performances I've ever done. Because I'm here I am, someone who's never been to Tyonic. I've been there for three or four days and I'm singing a song about the history of the people of the Athabascan people in that area to them. And when I opened up the, I, I, I tried to soften them up with about six comedies leading up to this. I don't know if that worked or not, but when I got to the, to this, uh, to sing the song, I said, Hey, I just got here. Chad explained to me a lot about your history. I put it in a song. I might have gotten some things wrong. Please let me know if I have, because I want this song to be right. And I sang it, and then uh, two elders came to me afterwards and pointed out different things. I had the order. I had the order of the loggers and the oil rigs wrong. The oil rigs preceded the loggers, um, which I didn't realize, because that's different down here in Washington. And then the other elder said, uh, he said, you know, we've been through all these hard times over the century, 
but we're still here. We're still surviving, and I think that should be in the song. And and I think that's maybe the most important line in the song. But this is a salmon come home. Thanks so much for requesting that, Rob. <coughs> Free rain here. <laughs> Sorry, rain. <laughs> <laughs> I'm learning. It's a learning curve. We're all on the learning curve. <laughs> <clears throat> the salmon come home again and again since the beginning of time, the beginning of when we've been living here. We've been living here forever. The salmon come home again and again since the beginning of time, the beginning of when we've been living here. We've been living on this land forever. But then the Russians came for the fur and ground. They built log forts and we burned them down. Then the great flu came, taking old and young. We gathered who was left, and we begin again. The salmon come home again and again since the beginning of time, the beginning of when we've been living here. We've been living here forever. The salmon come home again and again since the beginning of time, the beginning of when we've been living here. We've been living on this land forever. Then the oil rigs came, promising us jobs, leaving oil sheens as we carry on. Then the loggers came, taking the great trees, leaving mountains bare, leaving muddy streams. The salmon come home again and again since the beginning of time, the beginning of when we've been living here. We've been living here forever. The salmon come home again and again since the beginning of time, the beginning of when we've been living here. We've been living on this land forever. Now they come for the coal underneath our river to destroy our home take our children's future we are one small town we are one proud people we are one with salmon we are one with eagle we are one small town we are one proud people we are still surviving we are still surviving I do not believe creator wants this to happen I do not believe Creator wants this to happen. I do not believe Creator wants this to happen. I do not believe Creator wants this to happen. The salmon come home again and again since the beginning of time, the beginning of when we've been living here. We've been living here forever. The salmon come home again and again since the beginning of time, the beginning of when we've been living here. We've been living on this land forever. We've been living here. We've been living on this land forever. The salmon come home again and 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 again. Oh, thank you for requesting that song. Uh, I actually went, I was hired seven years in a row, or not in a row, but seven years to go work as a camp counselor uh, with the, the children of Tyonic, and it was so much fun. And uh, every day the kids would swim eight, 10, 14 hours a day in this freezing cold lake. I could stay eight, 10 minutes in it. It was very cold. And uh, the idea, I thought it was really a brilliant organizing idea. The idea of the summer camp was one to give a gift, to give a gift to, uh, <clears throat> to, the, to the whole town community. 
you know, a week off uh, with childcare for the adults and uh, just having a blast with the kids and studying, uh, you know, things about the area. And uh, then what would happen uh, was the, the parents and the leaders of the, and the, the tribal council members would come in through the week and it gave uh, Rob, who was working to stop this coal mine, they wanted to build a, a, a big coal mine in a river uh, and uh, dig 300 feet down and it would have destroyed the whole river. And so it gave the Rob a chance just to meet with the leaders and meet and, you know, to help stay in tune with the community and, uh, uh, you know, keep, keep everyone <clears throat> up to speed on what's going on. And I'm, I'm really happy to report that uh, right before the 2016 election, or maybe it was right after, they stopped the mine. That mine on the Chwitna River was stopped. And uh, it's, I don't know, fills me with such joy because we didn't know. We didn't know if we were going to stop that mine or not. And uh, that's where the local people get their fish. Um, that's how they make their living. That's what they eat. Um, it's the, the Chwitna River is the, the source of their, you know, it's the source of life for that village. And uh, what, what a celebration. And we went, we had a summer camp after winning as a celebration. And it was, it was fascinating to watch the, the children grow up over those years and some of them becoming young activists in college. And uh, so it's just, it's just important to remember moments uh, like the removal of the Elwha River Dam or beating the Chwitna coal mine. When you think about removing the Snake River dams or helping the orca, saving the orca or addressing climate change as the, the younger generations are uh, starting to lead on that, which I'm so pleased. And we have to address climate change to save the orcas too, of course. These things seem monumental and, and overwhelming and impossible. And right now, I would guess that most people watching would say, oh, wow, yeah, removing dams from the snake, that's politically possible. It seems, it seems, it seems like almost impossible. But in those moments, remember what we as a region have accomplished already. We fought and stopped six coal ports in Washington, Oregon. And almost everyone thought those would definitely go through. We fought and removed the Elwha River dams, freeing those rivers, honoring the treaty rights of the local Indians. It took 100 years, but we did it. Um, just south of where I live on the Magic Skagit, the beautiful Skagit River, they wanted to build a nuclear power plant there back in the 70s. You know, all the politicians except two local mayors are saying, oh, it's going through, no way to stop it. Well, the people fought, and there is no nuclear power plant on the Skagit River, and that is people power. And it's people power that can make things better for the orca. And, and I suspect that the orca, I think the orcas are smarter than we are. It's just that our culture doesn't know how to talk to them. Our culture doesn't know how to listen. But some of, some of us are starting to listen. Some of the children are listening. Some of the scientists are listening. I think the orcas have things to teach us. And, and as we come together, you might say, well, why haven't we removed those dams yet? The way... You know, and I want to thank I want to thank Governor Inslee and the Orca Task Force for all the excellent work they have done. They haven't gone as far as I would like them to go, but they've gone. They've done a lot. And in a democracy, uh, you if something hasn't been done yet, in general, what it means is there's not a big enough public movement to make it happen. The people have to be organized and. Uh, it's been remarkable watching the marches all over the United States and indeed around the world on Black Lives Matter, and things are actually occurring now, like I've never seen. And that's because people have had it. They've had enough. And I, and I want to say at some point, the movement will be big enough that the governor will have enough political cover to say, you know, we ought to bring no Snake River dams. I'm telling you, 10-year-olds, I hope there's some 10-year-olds watching, when the governor receives letters from 10,000 10 year olds saying, remove those dams, we want to save the orca. 15 year olds. When 15 year olds are showing up with their signs in front of Olympia saying, we got to save the orca, we got to clean up the pollution, we got to build rain gardens, we got we to cut down the boat noise. All people of all ages, when enough of us are doing that, the, the politicians who want to save the orcas, it gives them room to do it. And the po politicians who just don't care, they're looking over their shoulder going, oh man. Uh, I better say I'm for this or I'm going to lose my 
lose the election. So that, that's how it works. Um, but thank you for asking for that. Um, <clears throat> let's see. I'll just take a, take a quick look here before I sing the next song. <laughs> I got to practice cane toad mustard before I sing that one. I will practice, I promise, for the next time. Um, okay, I see. Rain, any, uh, any comments? Uh, I mentioned rain gardens. That, that, that's something people, we can, all, we can all work on pollution, like keeping our cars maintained. I mean, a lot of pollution goes into the, you know, do we really need to be using pesticides on our lawns that are going to be flowing down into the Puget Sound and the Sailor Sea. You know, we, you heard ride the lawn, okay? Yeah. <laughs> and we, we can all think about what can we do as individuals, any other, I know, and that's so cool, they have 49 suggestions. There's a zillion things that we can do. Uh, if you're, you know, follow the legislation. Once in a while, the, our legislature has a, a proposed law and you can comment on that. Your local legislators need to see that. You can, you know, uh, look at the Washington Environmental Council's website or People for Puget Sound or the Orca Salmon Alliance or Orca Network, and they'll be saying, hey, there's an important bill and we need you to support that. You can learn about it. Call your legislators. What are any other things that are popping in your head, Rain? Oh, my gosh, there's a lot. Uh, you can go to uh, Orca Salmon Alliance and Orca Month to see what you can do. Uh, we have a whole host of actions that are uh, kind of on the personal level that you can do on a day in, day out basis. And Things just come to mind is a uh, volunteer at a local habitat restoration project um, near you uh, mm -hmm. commit to using public transportation. Um, get your car fixed if it's leaking fluids, because all that ends up in the uh, streams in the Puget Sound after a rainstorm after a dry spell. Um, if you have the capacity at your home and yard to build a rain garden. Um, I think uh, communicating with your local electeds, whether it's a city council or mayor or county council or state representative, tell them that Puget Sound recovery and Salish Sea recovery and Orca recovery, same recovery is important and ask them what they're going to do, what they're going to do to stand up and hold them accountable. We want some Salish Sea champions out there um, that's going to make things happen. We need funding. Salmon restoration needs funding on, on the federal level. Contact your senators and representatives, urging them to support like federal um, federal money and packages to support those efforts. So those are a few things. Uh, if you hey, if you're a boat owner and you love to go out on the water, you should know the rules of the water. There are rules. Uh, when you see a, a southern resident orca or a, a big killer whale, you have to slow down to seven knots and stay 300 yards and 400 yards away. So to reduce noise and uh, disturbance. So those are some things, but let's hear from you, Dana, another song or two. Right on. <clears throat> I'm gonna take a shot at uh, my country here <clears throat> for Dan Ardia. Oh. Wrong button there, Dana. There. <laughs> it's all about the learning curve. We got to learn a lot of things over now. <laughs> got to learn how to shop. Got to learn how to perform. Got to learn how to hose everything down with alcohol. Oh boy. <clears throat> uh, thank you for requesting the song, Dan. I'll send uh, you know, love to you and your whole family. And I'm gonna I'm gonna dedicate this song uh, to uh, the people of the United States, my country, as we struggle to uh, keep our fragile democracy alive. And uh, the environment is fragile, and we have to work to protect it. And democracy is fragile, and we have to work to protect it, especially now. And I want to appreciate uh, the leaders in the uh, Black Lives Movement and just in our country in general who are working on just stopping voter suppression, uh, spe specifically uh, Stacey Abrams, who uh, from Georgia, who's doing, who's in my opinion, the leader 
on stopping voter suppression. Uh, I'm so excited that LeBron James came in uh, to lead uh, with other athletes to stop voter suppression. Um, everyone has a right to vote and every vote should be counted. And if one vote is left out, that's a big issue as far as I'm concerned. And uh, that's the name of the game right now. And so I'll, I'll dedicate this to uh, fighting to protect our beleaguered democracy, compromised as it is. I know it's not perfect. I can hear some of my friends saying, man, it's, this is hardly a democracy. My definition of a functioning democracy, I realize you know, democracies are in perpetual change. There's always people trying to destroy and end and corrupt the democracy. That's part of the deal. To me, the definition of a somewhat functioning democracy is where when enough people get organized that you can actually affect change. It might take a long time. Removing the Elwha River Dam is proof to me that our democracy is functioning at some level. Stopping the coal ports, people power, that democracy is functioning at some level. Uh, hearing from police chiefs across the country and watching legislator, le legislators, governors, uh, propose real changes in uh, the way police works in changes addressing systemic racism that is to me is proof that there is some functioning level of our democracy. It's not over yet. <clears throat> we could lose it, but we're going to fight to keep it. And so, uh, you know, pay attention, stay educated, um, vote. You're, you're relaxed. Flaky friends are like, yeah, yeah, I really should vote to help them vote. Voting's pretty complicated. You know, you, those things are, you know, if you ever seen California's ballot, it's crazy. Uh, so people need help, offer support, call people up. Do you remember to vote? Do you remember to mail in your ballot? Do you need to ride to the polls in states that do that? Pay attention to how they're doing voter suppression in Georgia and other states. Educate yourself on this. This is a big deal. This is my country for Dan. Worn. We camped in the mountains 
intense deserts and plains We hiked through the giant trees And I saw God in the beauty there I'll fight for my country I'll fight for my country Cluttered mind, the young man walks all alone. Six thousand miles away he finds for the first time that he feels at home. And he laughs to himself as he faces his fear in the land of the mighty grizzly. It once was like this everywhere. I'll fight for my country. It once was like this everywhere I'll fight for my country Now I love this river, love this land I love my green mountain home And when they come to cut the forest here They won't be fighting me alone Cause the wildlands are the places we go Remember what it means to be free When bad forces attack our land I'll fight for my country I'll fight for my country I'll fight for my country Thank you. Thank you, Adoniram and Lentland. Thank you. Thank you, everyone in quarantine. Thank you. This is safety of your own homes. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Wow. Okay. Thank you for requesting that. Dan, I'm going to bring in rain. I think we're going to wrap it up here. Um, I really... Uh, <clears throat> I'm really honored to uh, be a part of Orca Month. I'm real proud of our state, the state of Washington, and the leadership that our governor and our legislature is providing. We got to do more, but they're leading. I appreciate that. We have so many groups, so many little environmental groups dedicated to saving the Orca, dedicated to saving the salmon. I want to thank all the the Native Nations, the Lummi Nation, the Yakima, and you know so many, I can't even list them all, all working to protect the salmon and bring back the orca. Lummi Nation leading the charge to bring back Tokate, Lolita, the captive orca from here, kidnapped from here in the Salish Sea in 1968. Excuse me, now she's uh, captive in prison at SeaWorld, uh, Miami Sea, sea Aquarium. Uh, we're gonna, I believe that the Lummies are gonna be successful in bringing her back and uh, teaming up with the Orca Network and all of our Orca team, the Orca Salmon Alliance, People for Puget Sound, Washington Environmental Council. We have a big team. We have a big team. I'm amazed I can remember that many names uh, in the whole Orca Month team. <clears throat> uh, yeah, I'm just inspired. I just really, I believe, I believe that our region can do this. And, you know, I mentioned earlier uh, that climate change affects the Orcas too. And, you know, that, that's a real overwhelming one. But I believe that individual watersheds like the Salish Sea, different places in the world are eventually going to lead and say enough is enough. We are going to stop c contributing to climate change. We're going to clean up. And I believe that our region might be one of the first. And uh, it's, it's groups like this. It's efforts like this. It's, it's slow. 
It's deliberate. We need everybody on board. All of us have skills. Rain and I have been working on this stuff our whole lives uh, because we love the world. We love to get out into nature. We want to protect it. And of course you do too. And we, you know, Rain and I are both organizers and, uh, you know, we each have skills. We each have skills. I play some music. I do a little organizing. Some of us are carpenters. Some of us are teachers. Uh, <clears throat> some of us are healers. We need everybody. We need everybody in their capacity. Maybe you're particularly good with working with educating children. Whatever you're good at, maybe you're good at legal research. Okay, we need, we need everybody. It's a big team. You're not alone. There's a lot of us working on this. And, and I predict, uh, I predict in, in a short amount of time, we're going to be celebrating, you know, some years, but hopefully sooner or later, we're going to be up celebrating next to one of those Snake River dams when it's being removed. But we, we have a long way to go. There's a lot of things we can do. Uh, but thank you. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks for having me, Rain. And I want to say, um, we're, we're, Rain and I are doing another show like this uh, for Orca Month on June 28th. And I sent out an email and it said June 28th and somewhere in there it said July 28th. I mixed those months up. It's June 28th. <laughs> Orca Month is June. That's when the orcas come home here. That's when you can see them breaching and uh, it, it's a spectacular sight and and we hope that for those of you who are watching from around the country and around the world we hope that when it's safe to travel again when the when uh, <clears throat> you know our our healers and our, our doctors and our nurses and our scientists have figured out a way for us to be safe that you can come visit us here in the Salish Sea and we're gonna be fighting to make sure that the orca resident population is healthy so you can come see them when you come but Rain, tell us about uh, anything else with Orca Month or what, what do you got going? You know, Dana, you summed it up very nicely. Um, I'm not going to add anything else to it. <laughs> Except I look forward to your next concert in two weeks. Right on. Check out Orca and thank Month. You all our, yep. Thank you all our audience members and please spread the word and uh, let's have bring a friend or family member along to our next concert. Right on. And thank you for everyone's comments. I'm going to be reading them all afterwards and, uh, and I'll hopefully get to the request that I didn't get to this time in a future show. Yes. <laughs> Enjoy the rest of your Sunday rain. Good to see you. you likewise, Dana. <laughs> okay. I'm going to officially hit them and hit the end of the broadcast here. All right. For the Arcas, here we go. <laughs> Good night, everybody. <laughs>